Hi, fantastic teachers. Do you sometimes wish you were more productive? Well, I've got a strategy for you. Let's go. So today, let's see how to be more productive. But first, let me introduce myself. My name is Nadej Cezana, you can call me Nan, and I help teachers stop stress eating. And sometimes I hear people tell me I'm not organized enough to finish my projects. So if that's your case, here are two steps to complete any project. The first one is to plan, and the second thing is to do what you said you would do. But in this video, I am only going to refer to the plan. So let's see how it goes. So there are three steps to plan a project. The first one is to establish clearly what this project is. And to do that, you can use what we call the SMART goal. SMART is an acronym that stands for Specific, Measurable, Attainable, Relevant, and Time-bound. Let's see what this could be. So specific could mean who. Who is this project for? If it's a lesson plan you're doing, who is this for? Is it for um, kids in um, primary school or is it for university? And what, what is exactly is this lesson plan about? What specific skills do you want them to have? And where are you going to uh, teach this lesson? Is it going to be online? Is it going to be in front of a huge amphitheater or a small group? <laughs> and, oh, there was another question, which was when, when are you going to teach that class? Is it going to be once um, during the year and then at what time? Is it going to be um, every week and if so, uh, what time of the week is it going to be? Is it going to be right before the holidays or is it going to be on a Monday morning? We know that depending on the time, students will behave differently. So it's good to know when this lesson is going to take place and how. The, the last question you can ask yourself when you want to be specific is how. Are you going to use documents that you're going to print or project onto a whiteboard or, um, or just simply you're going to talk or use a book and exercises? You need to keep this in mind if you want to already have a clear idea of what you're going to teach. The M of the SMART goal stands for measurable, and by that I mean how many and how often, for instance. How many could be for that lesson? How many chapters are there? Or how many concepts are there? Um, how many um, days or hours or periods are you going to spend teaching that lesson? And the second one, the second question could be how often? How often are you planning to test whether your um, audience is getting it or not. So those are the types of questions that you can ask yourself to measure your project. The A in the SMART goal stands for achievable. And by that, I mean, is it within your control? And what is your goal at the end of this lesson? Is it for all the students to have understood the lesson or is it for the lesson to be understandable? There's a slight but very important distinction there in the sense that the best student ever, the one who gets everything, you know, in, a, in the twinkle of an eye, even um, they also can have bad days. They can, you know, be sick, they can be in love, they can have trouble. And if this is the case for them, then the best lesson ever <laughs> cannot be understood by them. So what you can focus on instead is focusing really on making the lesson as clear as it can be, really taking into account the feedback that you get from the people you check it with, like uh, the, the facial expression, or simply asking them directly, which doesn't mean that all of them will get it for reasons that have nothing to do with the lesson by itself. The second thing could be capable. Are you capable of delivering this lesson? If this lesson requires to use tech that you're not familiar with, well, are you willing to, uh, and that's the third point, the desire, are you willing to learn the resources? Do you have the time to learn this stuff, right? So this is what I mean by achievable. The R is actually the second step, which is so important, is this, is this relevant? Why do you want to teach that lesson? And I'm inviting you to consider different perspectives, perspectives, sorry, as far as this relevance is concerned. Why is this lesson relevant for you as a teacher, right? Um, perhaps you really want to teach that so that you can test, I don't, I don't know, a new document or a new method of teaching. And why is that relevant for them? Maybe it's because if you want to teach another concept in the next weeks or so, 
of course, they need to have these foundations first in place so that then this is more accessible for, for them. But maybe there are also different reasons. If I think of, for instance, my lesson, my program, my coaching program, Conquer Your Food Cravings for Good, this is relevant for my global activity, my global business, because I'm completely passionate about habits. And um, I also want to adapt this lesson uh, from food urges to any other kind of urges, the urge to play video games, the urge to smoke a cigarette, the urge to watch another Netflix show after the other one. So this is what relevance could be, could look like. And the last letter of the SMART goal is T for time bound. And I can't find this quote again, but if you know it, please let me know. But I've heard somewhere that a goal without a deadline is just a dream. So what do you want? Would you rather have a dream, which could be very nice in and of itself, or would you rather have a project which is completed? And for that, I'm really inviting you to use your calendar and decide on a deadline, decide on a time. And of course, if you're supposed to teach a lesson, maybe the time has already been decided and you just have to uh, follow through and just have to keep it in mind. So that was the SMART goal, which is the what, but also, as you've noticed, with the R of relevant, the why, the two of the three steps to plan a project. The third one is how, and how includes the tasks, but also the obstacles, the strategies, the priorities, the duration, and the calendar. I'm going to explain it all to you. When I talk about the task, it means that if you are planning a lesson, planning to teach a lesson, then perhaps you need to gather information and then you can brainstorm and maybe you can ask questions to colleagues or to students or you can gather information and then start um, creating an outline and filling it up uh, with the illustrations, examples, etc. That's the first step, the task, the different steps that are going to take you from no project at all to a completed project, right? That we usually think of, but the second step is usually forgotten, and it's, it seems to me that it's super important. It's the obstacles, because of course, when we plan a project, we expect, and I'm the first one to be guilty as charged, because I do that all the time, we plan for it to go perfectly smoothly. But of course, life gets in the way. And life could be the printer doesn't work, right? Students don't know this already. so. I am really inviting you to take into account all the obstacles that you could encounter because that's the third step. The third step would be for you to plan for a strategy or strategies for each of the obstacles that you're going to meet. For instance, if your computer is not working, then what? Maybe you can borrow somebody else's computer. Maybe you can work from school. Maybe, I don't know, maybe you can use a pen and paper. <laughs> Let's be crazy. Things like that. So, the tasks, the obstacles that you could encounter, and strategies for each of those obstacles. Those are the three steps of the how, how to get from no project at all to a completed project. And now it's time to decide on the priorities. Priorities, by that I mean remove all the unnecessary tasks, the tasks that could be linked to perfectionism. You don't need to have it perfect, you just want to get it completed, all right? So once you've decided on what actions, what tasks you really need to take to get it completed, then I suggest that you decide which one is the first one, which one should go first. Let's imagine there's a podium, there's the winner, the number one, and then there will be number two, and then there will be number three, potentially all the numbers. But let's be clear on to what is really foundational, right, fundamental. So you've established priorities, and then for each of those priorities, I'm inviting you to consider the duration. How long do you think it's going to take you to gather information? How long do you think it's going to take you to create a slide? All right, to, to create a slide um, thing. I can't remember the word, right? And then once you've established how long it's going to take you, and I'm really inviting you to decide how long it's going to take you then, rather than think, oh, I don't know, maybe, because we know that we can spend hours and hours gathering information, consuming rather than creating. So I'm inviting you to decide ahead of time, I'm going to spend one hour, you know, gathering information and then I'm going to get going. And then perhaps afterwards, I'll go back to it and improve it. But right now, 
I want to get it done. That's my main priority. So once you've done that, once you've established how long you're going to spend on each of those tasks, I'm inviting you to put them in your calendar. We know there's a deadline. We know there's a deadline that you've decided upon. And then we know that right now, nothing's been done. So between now and then, <laughs> how are you going to put those things in your calendar, knowing that each step is going to take you this amount of time? And really, block time in your calendar, decide this is where it goes and I'm going to execute. And of course, that's the next part. Now it's your turn to play. So the first step could be to just start applying the first step of the process that I mentioned at the beginning of this video. And the second step could be to notice if you notice an obstacle, then try to define it in just one sentence, one simple sentence. And step number three could be it could be a potential strategy to actually reach out to me and ask for my advice if you're completely confused and if you don't know what to do. And I'd love to give a special thank you to my muse who addressed this topic to me. So thank you so much. And if that's the case for you too, if you have uh, topics uh, that you'd like me to explore, well, please send me a message at nscoaching at outlook.fr and I'd, be lo I'd love to help you. That's it for today. Thank you so much and have a beautiful rest of your day. Bye.